So check this out. On the day I recorded this video, you will pay one euro when buying a stock from the US exchange on the Dejiro investment platform. But when buying from the European exchanges, it varies depending on the country you live in. For example, if you are in the Netherlands and you buy a stock from German exchange, the fee is 3.9 euros. But if you buy from the Dutch exchange, then it is a 2 euro fee. <laughs> Hello finance people, my name is Robert and I'm here to share my learnings and experience about personal finance as a European. And in this video, I'll explain the most important the Giro trading platform fees. And at the end of the video, I'll show you a few simple examples so you know how to apply them. And although the Giro claims they are transparent about their fees, it requires a bit of work to actually put it all together. And just to start off, they don't charge withdrawal or deposit fees unlike some other platforms. So if you're interested in buying trackers such as S&P 500 ETF, then you're in luck because the Giro offers what they call ETF core selection. And if the ETF is part of this core selection, then it's free of charge once per month. But the rest ETFs are two euros per transaction. And if you want to know which ETFs are part of the core selection in the Giro, you just uh, Google for it. And for your market, all these pages look the same. And you have a list of all the ETFs that are part of it. And keep in mind that I made this video on the 8th of August, 2023. So check the latest fees and ETF core selections in the Giro's fees page. Or you can always see what fees have been charged by going to your inbox then clicking on the account statement and here you will be able to see all the fees you can see some of them are red and they're quite clearly marked here so let's take a look at the fees a little bit more closer so here i have the fees for uk and by the way the Giro always has them in this pdf format you can see i have here uk netherlands and germany they have similar structures and most of them are the same but there are some small differences especially if, if we look at stocks there are some differences so here we already went through a little bit the stocks but what i want to show you here is few things here in the fine print so the prices do not show you the taxes they apply so sometimes you will see some taxes deducted from your account there's not much you can do about that because all the platforms have to do it for you but just keep in mind if you see something with taxes that is normal or at least that's expected and there are other costs that if the, the Giro occurs, for example, when there's a merger or something, you might see those kind of costs also in your transaction history. But it's really hard to predict what that would be, but they're quite small usually. And pretty much if you buy in the United States, all the countries have the same one. So here you see it's one euro, but then depending where you're located, the European exchanges are a little bit different. I already mentioned about the trackers so you have the etf core selection which has no fees and then the rest are basically two euro fee then we have bonds and you can see that there's only five countries you can buy from you have the governmental bonds and also the private company bonds like volkswagen or something you can buy them in the giro and the fee is two euros then if you want to look at the investment funds you see that the prices have a one-time fee plus a service fee of 0.2%. Now, if you buy it from Morgan Stanley Liquid Funds, then it's free. I guess they have a, some sort of a deal. But always make sure you check that there's a, some fine print with all of these. So for example, if you buy Euronext fund services with a thousand euros, you would have a fee of 3.9 euros plus a two euro fee. So 5.9 euro fee in total. So just keep in mind that there's that as well. Now you have some other uh, products here, for example, leverage, but you can take a look at them here with options. Also, you have a 0.7 uh, euro per contract. And again, it a little bit depends on what country you're in. And so this might change for you. So that's why I'm going to skip this. You have the US options here as well. And then you come to futures. Again, a little bit depending on the country. You can see here I have futures for UK. And if I look at futures in the Netherlands, you see that actually in the, this case, they are exactly the same, but just check them. It's easy to check because they are per contract. Then you have a handling fee, which is applied every time you trade. And it's usually one euro. Or if you're in the UK and you buy from the UK exchange, then it's one British pound. Other than that, this is always applied. So we can't change that. You just need to take into account if you're buying with small amounts that this kind of a handling fees. Now, if you are still unsure if the Jira is for you, then check out my trading platform finder. You just answer a few questions and it will suggest the best platform for your needs. Click on the link in the video description to use it. Then you have the currency fees. So when you convert currency, for example, from euros to dollars, then the Jira applies this 0.25% uh, fee. 
And remember, this happens also, so you convert your euros to dollars, and when you convert dollars back to euros, this will be applied basically two times. So just keep in mind that this will happen. Then you have the short selling fee here, and it depends on the type of the asset you're buying or shorting in this case. And in case you don't know what short selling is, in a nutshell, you're basically betting against the stock. So for example, if you see the Tesla stock will go down, you can short sell it. And when it goes down, that's when you make your money. But keep in mind, short selling is much more riskier. So if you want to know what short selling is and how it actually works, then check out this video right here. If you click on that banner, I'll explain everything in a short video. And in case for short selling, you want to do that, you have the categories here so you can see which which of the fees apply to you. Then you have the debit rates, but honestly, this is uh, only if you're into currencies. So check out what's it, what it is for your country, but they are there. They, they, they have certain fees for that as well. Then we come to the real-time price feed, and this is a, a, you don't need to take this. So this is like an optional service that the Jiro provides. By default, you have few exchanges that are always live. So you can see here, uh, these ones are always live and they're free. But if you want to see a specific exchange, for example, in Greece, then you could pay five euros per month per exchange to see the live feed. I think there's usually a 15 or 30 minute delay if, if you don't get this. So next one is the Jira exchange connection fee, which is a bit sneaky because I don't think you can notice it until you start trading. Luckily, it's only two and a half euros. That's per year. But every time you start a new trade on a new exchange, they will charge you this connection fee. And as long as you keep it, the trade open, every year they will charge this fee. If you're investing with small amounts, keep in mind this one, maybe you just pick on one or two exchanges where you invest, and that way you keep th this uh, fee to a minimum. Then you have some extra services that the Jira offers, but basically this is really depending on your needs. What I wanna highlight here is, for example, if you ever want to transfer your portfolio to another broker without closing the trades, you can see that they charge a certain fee. For example, in the UK, it's 20 euro per position, plus external costs, I guess in this case, if you are uh, wherever you transferring, if that broker charges some fees, but usually they don't. But in any case, this would be per position. So if you have 10 positions, you would have to pay 200 euros just to take that portfolio and transfer it to a new broker. And for some countries, this might be even higher fee. So make sure you uh, check this out if you're planning to at some point move your portfolio. But at least you have the option to transfer your portfolio. Some uh, brokers don't offer this one. Another one I wanna highlight is to, you can register for shareholders meeting. I haven't done that in the Jiro, but I imagine that you can then somehow um, join the shareholders meeting. And if you have a big stake in a company, then you could somehow also vote, I guess. But it's uh, 100 euros per position. So if you're interested, I, I thought that was just cool that you can do that also from here. I also want to highlight the insufficient funds procedure. You can see there's only two of them. Closing of position because of ongoing de deficit and cost of exceeding margin of 125%. So make sure you, you, you don't go over these limits. So let's go through a few simple examples. Let's say I want to buy an ETF such as VUSA in euros. In my case, since I'm in the Netherlands and euros are my currency, I don't have to pay any conversion fees. I will also select an ETF from an exchange that is part of the Digiro core selection. In this case, I would only pay one euro as handling fee. But let's say I want to buy an US stock in dollars with my account being in euros and I have a uh, thousand euros. This means I will be charged a conversion fee of 0.25%, which is two and a half euros. Then a fee for buying a stock, which is one euro. Next, they would also charge a handling fee of one euro. This means I would pay four and a half euros in fees plus another 0.25% conversion fee when I sell this stock. And let's say I sell it for the same price. That means in total, there will be seven euros of fees during the whole process. Process. Now that you understand the zero fees, but if you don't go for it, you are just missing out on learning how to trade. That's why you should watch this video next, where I'll show you how to use the zero and buy your first stock or ETF.